Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me for this acrylic painting tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to paint this dark floral. Uh, we're going to simplify it a little bit, but um, I think it's going to be kind of a medium difficulty painting. And I'll show you how to do it start from start to finish. <laughs> step by step. Step, step by step. By. Yes. <laughs> Got tongue tied there. Got my husband Mark with me. Hey there, everybody. He's me in a chat for our live show today. So if you've got questions while I'm painting, you can ask those and I'll try to answer them. Let's get started. Alrighty, so I'm using a 9 by 12 inch canvas panel today. This is the Belgian Linen Pro Series from Fredericks. Love these canvases. Uh, they are canvas sponsor, so thank you to them for providing our canvas. And I've coated it with carbon black. So it comes white, uh, pre-gessoed. You don't have to do anything special uh, prep on these canvases, but I've just gone ahead and covered it with one layer of carbon black to get us started. And then I sketched out my design on there. Um, I've got a number six half inch bright from the Princeton Umbria, these dark handled ones here. Um, I've also got their number four three eighths inch angle and a number two round in that series. And then in the red handles, they're their velvet touch line. I've got a number six filbert, a quarter inch angle, three eighths inch angle, number four round and two odd script liner. And then in their uh, summit series with the long handles, um, I've got a number four filbert. So I'm uh, not sure I'm gonna need all these brushes, but I just grabbed them. Thank you to Princeton, they're our brush sponsor. And um, yeah, love their stuff. All right, let me go over colors really quick. I've got carbon black, burnt umber, burnt sienna, quinacridone, burnt orange, yellow oxide, cadmium yellow medium, phthalo green yellow shade, ultramarine blue, doxazine purple, uh, quinacridone magenta, cadmium red medium, unbleached titanium. This is a um, Matisse color called ash pink. And uh, it's just pre-mixed because we're going to be using a lot of that color. And then um, titanium white. And this is also titanium white in just a fluid form. Not sure. It, it might make it easier to do some of the petals. And then I've got a, a little bit of glazy medium. Um, okay. So, phew, that was fast. Let me... Um, talk a little bit about the sketch. So what I decided to do, because um, there was so much going on in this reference photo, I decided to simplify it just a little bit. So I took out this flower. Uh, it's lovely, but um, there's just a lot. And I wanted to make this the focal point and make it bigger so that it fits our canvas better. Um, and you can see where I placed it. I moved it down over here. So instead of being kind of in the middle and being smaller, it's now it's, it's right down here kind of towards the bottom. And it's our big focal point. So we took this one out and we shifted this flower over to like right in here. And then we moved the hydrangea down a little bit, kept this flower, kept this flower, got rid of this and tucked this flower in a little bit. And then we're gonna keep this whole um, thing with the butterfly in this flower here. Uh, and so all of these other flowers that are kind of around scattered around, we're going to try to fit as many of them as we can in, but it'll, we'll be able to tell kind of more when we get to painting, um, how that goes. So, um, <clears throat> and, and as far as drawing flowers, I, I don't know, I, I, you can see how uh, loosely I sketched it. I don't really sketch every single petal because I just find that that's um, not necessary with these kind of flowers where we're kind of trying to do it sort of loose style somewhat. Um, so it was just if you get kind of the overall shape of it, um, it'll give you a place to start. So um, I'll show you kind of what I did here. I just kind of figured out where I wanted that large flower to be and sort of map out the outside shape of it and the hydrangea here and that little um, open, I don't know what that is, um, probably peony also just kind of a different kind of petaled one um, there. And then um, one here that's another like open petaled flower and then our rose tucked down in here. So just kind of uh, very lightly, I don't know if you can even see that, very lightly kind of map out sort of where you think you want to put your flowers. And you can also kind of get an idea of if they're going to fit or not. Um, and uh, and then, okay, yeah. Just trying to see here what I did. 
So then I start looking at the outside shape of it because those will be kind of the first petals that we put in and start to kind of map that out. This comes in and it comes back out and uh, I'm not worried about the inner petals right now. I'm just looking at that outline border of it. So it does all these kind of little zigzag things as it comes around like that, right? Then the center of the flower is going to be facing down. So we're going to see some petals that are kind of cupping the center. It is not in the middle. It is um, the, the center of these petals are coming toward the middle. So the middle is where kind of all those petals are tucked down in. So they're all kind of pointing in that direction, right? They're all kind of going back in here. But the actual opening of the flower is down in this direction here because it's facing away from us. And so we're going to see kind of these little petals like this and just a little bit of an opening here like that. And that's all we're going to need for that. And then we're going to have these petals coming out this way where we're seeing sort of the flat side of them, um, some of these. Right here. Oh, look, that fly is going to annoy me the whole time. I can tell already. She's already buzzing around my head. All right, so there's a few petals that we're going to see kind of the flat side of, but most of these are going to be kind of facing us. So we're just going to see these like squiggly lines and things all in through here. And up in here, they're, they're overlapped so much that we're not seeing a whole lot of detail in them. And then some of these larger petals, we can kind of form um, some of these shapes here. We can form into petals that come in a little bit and overlap each other. And then there's petals coming out this way that are cutting off. Okay, so there's our basic, um, I don't know, it seems very washed out. I don't know if you can see that. But... Um, basic shape there and this in the, our hydrangea our petals um, along the edge are facing a well away from us so we're only seeing kind of them from the side which is sort of they're just like a cluster of blooms all packed in tightly so some of them we're seeing a little bit more of them um, And there's a little guy there, and then maybe another one right in here. As they come out, we're seeing kind of more of the sides of them. So these ones in the middle here, we're going to, they're facing us, so we're going to see the whole thing. We're going to see the actual individual blossoms of it, and then as they're facing away from us, we're kind of seeing them more um, from the side, right? Then there is an uh, iris here. I hated to cut out the iris, but there just wasn't room for it. Sorry. But I do have other tutorials on how to do irises in this kind of more simplified style. We just did them in my garden um, tutorial that we did. So we'll probably put the bud in there, but I don't think we can fit anything else. And... Um, so if you go back through my my uh, photo my um, videos, you could see uh, some of those. So if you want to tuck an iris in there, you totally uh, can. Just you may have to get rid of one of these other flowers or more make them smaller. Okay, and right here again, find that center part of the flower. That's where everything is going to kind of come out of. So we've got these petals right here, and then we've got some larger petals coming out there. And then we've got some individual petals kind of coming out the sides here. You can see how just quickly sketching it. Um, you can take your time if you, you know, if you're kind of more um, uh, need, you know, need more of a um, exact drawing. When you start, I will have the traceable done. Once I finish the painting, I'll, I make the traceable from the finish between my finished painting. So um, I'll have that available um, on my Patreon page. If you um, are interested in that, that'll give you a head start. And um, then you don't have to draw it at all. 
Okay, lots of different petals here. This one, they're all kind of folding in on each other. And then this large rose here. Um, so the rose is facing down. So same thing with this. We're kind of seeing the opening down below the center. The center of the flower is kind of somewhere right in here ish or the you know the part, part where the stems coming out um so all these petals are going to kind of come out from there and face back in towards that area so these ones come down like this and then we've got a little bit of an opening area where we see just a few little petals but this area has got kind of a oh you know, Sort of a half moon shape, I guess. Best way to describe it. There. And then they start just kind of doing these little random um, petals that are all stacked up real close to each other. They're not fully open yet. And then on the outside, you're seeing the petals that are starting to come out and fold out. So those are a little bit closely packed. And then there's this triangle kind of angle shape right here where the first petals start to kind of come out. And we're seeing in there. And then there's a large petal here. Just look at the outside shape. Don't worry about, like, your brain's going to try to tell you what to, paint, to draw here. But just kind of look and really concentrate on what you're seeing, the outside shape. Maybe look at the black area instead of the rose itself. Um, really focus in on just that area. Don't look at it as a whole, but kind of just look at that part right there, you know, and then look and see what is that line looking like. Okay, so it's kind of swooping up, back down, and up. And if you just kind of focus on little areas at a time and connect the dots that way, um, you doesn't you don't get lost in this whole you know uh, flower thing, and your brain doesn't take over and try to draw what it thinks it should look like instead of what you're actually seeing. Um, so you kind of just have to force yourself to. Because, you know, that looks kind of weird. It doesn't look like a rose it, that you may, like if you closed your eyes and thought of what a rose shape would be, um, it may not be this exact shape. And so um, your brain is going to kind of fight you when you're drawing it um, and make you, you know, draw things that are not there. Okay, so then our butterfly, really simple. Got a little head and a little body. There, kind of a line, his tail, little butt. I can't really tell his little butt. They're in three parts. So the butterfly will have, um, will have a, you know, little head section and then a little thoracic part where all the wings are attached. Is that the thoracic? I don't know. I'm, I'm making up words here. And then the um, tail section here, which I'm sure that's not called tail, but I, that's what I call it. Um, so those are the three sections of your butterfly. So we're seeing him from the side, but basically those, all those shapes are still there. The um, From the side, that middle section here looks more like this. It's kind of bowed out a little bit and kind of flat on the top. And then his little head comes down and then the tail is kind of sticking up a little bit from it so it looks a little bit different from the side um, but then all his legs and his wings are all coming from this middle section here the antenna are coming off the head obviously um, but right in here there the wings coming up um, and they all really attach in a very small area surprisingly so they all kind of fold in on each other and overlap right here so this one is going to be coming in um, the middle the the middle split of the wing is pretty much right in the middle part of that body and then the upper one is um just under the head there and they're going to come up like that well this not not that far um come up like this and then this open wing back here you think about where it's coming from so you're going to kind of just imagine it coming out like this and then coming out and then back in and then this part is right in here and it's not it's not fully facing us it's kind of it's kind of angled towards us we're not seeing the whole flat side of it and we're seeing a little bit more of that one. okay so that's kind of our butterfly drawing there i didn't do it on here but um you get the idea okay hopefully
Let's get pinked in. So if it's not obvious to everybody, uh, we're not insectologists. <laughs> so you may not want to pay attention to anything that was just said about <laughs> the anatomy of a butterfly. <laughs> I think insectologists are, uh, what are they called? They have a, There's a scientific name for that. Like I said, we're not insectologists. <laughs> we don't know what we're talking about. I've painted lots of butterflies. I know. If you tuned into this channel to learn about insects, <laughs> you might want to go see a doctor. <laughs> okay. I'm just, just saying. Hush, hush. <laughs> They'll be fine. <laughs> Close enough. <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> hey, at least you got the antenna coming out of the head. That was the good part. <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay. So, we'll paint this one. Uh, this will be kind of one of our last ones to do because he's like in front of all these other ones. So, we'll just kind of start painting from back to front and um, get to this one in time. Um, so, let's go ahead and do the, the hydrangea here. I'm going to go ahead and grab that ash pink. Now, ash pink, we've 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 done it before. We've mixed it before, and I think it was um, a little bit of black and some white and a little bit of like a yellow oxide to make it a little bit more orange. So that'll be kind of our. Um, so I've got quinacridone magenta, a little bit of black, a little bit of the yellow oxide here. This will be our dark dark version of our dark layers in the hydrangea and then if I added white to it it would be similar to this probably not exact but it's close enough so I'm just using this ash pink because it's giving me a head start um and I can pull from it and know that it's going to be the exact see actually that's pretty pretty close maybe a little bit more pink so I could add a little bit more of the maybe unbleached titanium or something if I wanted to get a little bit more dull but um I like it Okay, so whew, I've got a lot of paint on my brush. I'm just gonna squeegee that off to try to kind of keep some of it on the can on the palette here. And I need to spray with water so that it doesn't dry out on me before I can even use it. And I'm gonna start with the dark color. In fact, I'm gonna grab a little bit of this unbleached or the quinacridone burnt orange and use it with some more magenta. Little little bit of black maybe. I may have added too much white here. We'll see. Let me get going here. Um, so our dark areas are in here. I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of paint those in. Just some little reference flower points. This is our dark areas in between our petals. And I'm painting down here where I'm actually not seeing, so I'm just going to kind of repeat what I'm seeing up here and do it down on this part because it's not in our reference photo. Just let everybody know that if you hear like a big crashing whack, that's me trying to kill this. Kill the fly, so. Killing, yeah. <laughs> My hero. I shall protect you, my love. <laughs> I have my trusty sword here. <laughs> it starts to glow when there's flies near. <laughs> so you know. <laughs> Either that or just see it buzz by. <laughs> I love it. You may need new batteries, I don't know. <laughs> Okay, so I mixed up some darker because that wasn't dark enough. You can see the difference here. This had white on my brush. And so I mixed up the same color, quinacridone magenta, quinacridone burnt orange, and a little bit of burnt umber and black. Um, just a little bit of the black and burnt umber goes a long way, though. So you just you want to keep the intensity of the color in here. But I just need a little bit darker. I'm just going to go kind of in between where I did and just have a little tint of color in my dark areas. I like that. Wipe that out. And then I'm going to get some of my light color here. I'm just going to start 
placing petals in and I'm just going to set them down and kind of swoosh through. If that makes sense, but I'm going to. Barely touch it down. I have my brush loaded not too thickly with paint, but there's a decent amount on there, right? It's not, but I have a good, uh, the main thing is that you want to have a good straight edge. You see how thin that edge is. I've got it loaded dark on the back side there, so I didn't clean my brush out. But um, just picking up, running it through that paint to get fresh paint every now and then, and I'm just going to set my brush down and pull it in the direction when I want these petals to go. And this will be kind of how we get these petals in without having to paint every little thing. Okay. So the direction for these are the open ones. We're going to just set it down and kind of pull straight in. And the side ones, I'm going to I'm going to set it on its end and kind of pull in this way. Set it on its end, pull in this way. So I'm getting kind of a sideways petals. And then the other two, I'm going to kind of do smaller versions of the same. And if I get too much, I can just get some of my middle color here and kind of go back in and tap in some of that like that. Okay. So one, two, three, and they're not all going to be exactly the same. So, but that's, they're all really stacked in tight together. So I'm just, now I'm trying to kind of fit a few of them in here. So some of these petals I'm seeing just like the side of them, you know, just like a little tiny bit of it. And then these ones on the outside are a little bit darker. So I'm going to get the kind of medium dark color here. So we mixed up and do those with a little bit darker intensity color. There, side, using the side of the brush. Trying to go slowly so I, I'm not just assuming that you know what I'm doing here. Explain it a little bit slower today. <laughs> I tend to get going on flowers and they just go, okay, it's done. And like, realize I'm trying to slow it down. Okay, so, and it's real important to leave these pockets of dark. So give that, the painting um, gives your flowers a little bit of depth. So let's go ahead and use this darker color over here. All right, and I think that's going to be all I need to do, I'm going to, I'm going to kind of take some and kind of put them out a little bit from the end just to kind of create an interesting outline on there. But that's about all I'm going to do. Maybe take one and do kind of. This is a hydrangea. Mm hmm And you have a, was it a bonus video that you did that super big yes. hydrangea? Yes. I mean, that was super like, detailed. Yes. That was like hours. Right. It was, like, uh, it was like, it was two parts. So it was like 10 hours, I think, of finally. I was like, we did every single petal on that yeah. thing and it was super detailed. So this is the way easier version. <laughs> <laughs> way shorter, way easier. But yes, if you're interested in painting in a hydrangea completely super realistic, like we do have a video of that somewhere. Um, I don't know. I don't know where the painting is. I'd show it, but I don't have it handy. Yeah, it's uh, right now. But we did it for Patreon, right? right? Packed. Yeah, it's it's for the it was for the ten dollar group. We did it in there. Okay, so taking some white now. I'm just putting in my little or the white. The five dollar group. We did it. Oh, was Sundays. it for five dollar? Two Sundays in a row, or something like that, right? Uh, it was two months. It was two months long. Uh, oh yeah, the 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 iris was the the iris was the ten dollar group. Yeah, yeah the right. ten dollar gets the Thursday shows. Yeah, it was the five dollar. Yeah. Oh man, it's been so long. I haven't. Wow, we're only in our we're only in our fifties too. Huh? So we're only in our fifties also. <laughs> Just give us another. Yeah, uh, well, years. I've done I've done like four hundred something videos. I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 Can't 
remember off the top of my head. So, okay, so I'm going to take some white on this brush here and just highlight just the tops of some of these petals too. Just kind of, just a few of them. This will be really all we're going to do on these. We're not going to But you see how this really, it's effective, I think. Get the idea. You can definitely see that these are hydrangeas. I actually like this looser style. Even though I paint a lot of realism, I really do like painting in this looser style. Um, and I feel like it's a little bit more um, accessible for um, those who are just starting out, you know, painting. It's a little bit easier, maybe less tedious. And... Um, yeah, you're seeing the results a little bit faster. So, okay, so let's call that good on there. That was the number one, uh, number two round, sorry. Two round, and then this one was the filbert. And I've got paint all of them. How did I do that? I don't know. So somebody asked, uh, how do you not use up your whole palette and save room for the other colors? Well, oh. believe it or not, Angela spread them to the space that she's given. What? So when she was using just styrofoam plates, she could do a whole painting on a styrofoam plate. And now she's got a glass palette that's like two to three times bigger, and she uses all of it. <laughs> I do. And then scrapes it down and uses it all again. <laughs> I know. I know. Now that I've got unlimited space, I'm not as careful. Well, and on the foam plates, they stayed dry or they stayed wet longer too. So, you know, if we ha I had more time to work with them. Um, these are already kind of starting to dry here. They just, they, when you're, anytime you're flattening out your paints, you're going to, they're going to dry faster. So let's go ahead and use this color. This is the same color that we're going to be using on this flower. So let's go ahead and do it before it dries. Um, this black the dark is already dried i'm gonna scoop up as much as i can but i don't want little flakes of paint in my brush so uh let's go ahead and start putting some of those in And you can see how I'm kind of leaving some of that dark showing through. The, the The nice thing about starting with the dark canvas like this, and especially since we're keeping our dark, our our paints kind of dark, just in general, our colors are going to stay somewhat dark. Um, we uh, we can use that to our advantage here and let it work our shadows for us. So we can let our shadows be kind of fall into this dark area here and we don't have to paint everything in solid. Well, I'm going to go back in here in this dark area and add some of the quinacridone magenta, cadmium, or uh, magenta and quinacridone burnt orange color with the little bit black and brown, just like we did over here on the hydrangea. Your center. Okay. Another petal right here. Another petal right here. Okay. So there's our shape. Go ahead and get some of our lighter color. We'll start kind of mapping in or going around the outside there. Looking at my highlight areas and just trying to put those in.
dark color here. Okay, there's a petal right here that's kind of cutting off that section, so I need to move that in a little differently there. Okay, so these ones are coming up from here and folding under, so I'm going to do that and just kind of let them disappear underneath there like that. There's another one that's coming up here that I missed. And then that area there is dark, so get some more of that dark color if I can get it. There we go. And just come up with the dark color. Fill that in. This petal comes out here. You have to fix that petal there. These ones are fairly dark, so I'm just going to stick with this darker version color. darker color here. And then this petal is folded this way. Folding under this direction. Alright, let's get some of our highlight. So, hi everybody. I didn't say hi. Stopped. <laughs> I just jumped right into painting here. Hope you guys are having a good Saturday. Thanks for hanging out with us. And if you're new to our channel, hope you'll subscribe and come back. We do this usually every Saturday. We're going to be taking Saturdays off this summer. So if you haven't seen that on our new schedule, it's going to be coming out. Uh, our summer schedule. I've got all my uh, July and August paintings um, figured out. So those will be coming out this week. Um, if you're part of our newsletter, we sent out kind of a preview of what we're going to be painting yesterday. But we've already got most of the paintings um, scheduled on, well, really all of them. I say most all of them are scheduled on uh, my homepage. So if you go to click on my name or my photo, it'll take you to my homepage and you'll see the upcoming schedule of videos for this summer. So we're gonna we're giving Mark a break on Saturdays this summer. Thank you. You're welcome. He's got garden to to uh, work on. I got outdoorsy things to do. Right. He was out there building himself a ramp for his new shed, man shed, man cave. <laughs> Yep. Which it, if it was up to me, I would have just bought it. But Mark's like, I could build that. So. Yes. <clears throat> yes. The the conversation went. Why did you just buy one? <laughs> because. <laughs> What's the fun in that? <laughs> I can't use my power tools if I just buy it. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Or 
wouldn't have an excuse to buy more tools. <laughs> exactly. Oh, did we buy more tools? No, not this time. Okay. But you never know. I'm not done yet. <laughs> okay. I mean, I have a truck to go pick up wood. So wh- why would I have a buy a a ramp? I went and helped him buy buy wood in our new truck. This is new. It's, um... Yes, yeah, sir, and the checker were giving me a hard time. I was. Because, again, he didn't need help. I didn't need help putting it in the truck. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Whatever. So you're so macho now that you got your truck. I just can't handle it. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm earning my man card finally. <laughs> We didn't feel left out, or you didn't feel like out of place driving your Prius down to the Lowe's. Okay. So let's be honest here. Would you have gone with me to get wood if we had gone to my Prius? No. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) True, true. Good point. She secretly likes my truck. I do like it. No secret. I admit it. I can see the appeal. You're sitting up way high. All right, so darken up the center where the center of the flower is going to go there. This petal I'm not really happy with. I don't really know what's going on with that. But uh, I think I need to. So I've got it light all the way across, but it actually goes dark right here. And cuts this off in half and I just lifted off the color underneath. Oh, yeah. The paint underneath wasn't dry. Okay, so we'll just leave we'll leave that. It's close enough. Looks like a flower. That's the important thing. And we'll we'll wait on adding a lot of details to it. Okay, let me see if I've got this color anywhere else. This color down here is a little bit more reddish. So I think I've got all of the areas where this pink is. So I'm going to take my water and paper towel. This is dry. I'm just going to gently tap off. don't want to rub because it'll lift off the black paint. Just tap off my drawing around that guy there so I kind of can see what I've got. And do the same thing over here. We'll have to make sure this is dry though. And I maybe, well no, I think it'll be okay. I was going to say I maybe should have painted this one first, but I'm just going to overlap it on top of this one. Okay. Got a little bit of pink there. Okay. So now we can kind of see what we've got going on. Got a good head start. Let's go ahead and do this petal here, this flower here. So white flowers are tricky because they're, um, uh, you know, with the white, it's hard to show depth because there's not a lot of value change um, in them usually. This one's actually going to have a fairly decent amount of dark on this bottom area, but this one's got a lot of it is in light. So we have to kind of look and see. And usually I like to use like... Um, blue or browns um, or golds to um, to shadow on white. So I think we're going to go ahead with uh, ultramarine blue and burnt umber. That's that dark gray mixture that I like to do. And I think it'll give us a good 
shadow color and then we can use some gold with it. I see some gold. I'm going to use some burnt umber and yellow oxide and do kind of a gold version of this. I still have that blue in my brush so it's going to make it more neutral. Yeah, that's pretty. Okay, that'll be good. So these colors may seem really dark at first, but um, and we'll we'll go ahead and use a little bit of white in here because there is it isn't super dark. I'm gonna go ahead and mix those two together. Okay, so our let's go ahead and map out our outlines for this these petals. That color is not gonna be right, so I'm gonna get a little bit of white and. Go ahead and grab some of that fluid away. It'll just make it a little bit easier to put in these petals. Okay. So these petals here, let me see. So they're going to go this will be kind of our center in here somewhere. Kind of the bottom area where we're seeing those petals come up. down like that and then we're starting to see these petals from this side here. Overlapping. I'm trying to see if I want to leave more room than that. Kind of don't like that they're overlapping that petal. probably have to clean that up because I I know I've got paint there now. Okay, so there's our shape. Basic shape. Let me get some black hair. up around that petal right there. I moved that one over too, so we're just going to move all these over just a little bit. This is why um, I, when I'm using a black um, base, I don't like if you're if you have a black gessoed canvas. I never use the um, straight gessoed canvas. I always paint over it a little bit uh, with black because you're going to inevitably have to kind of fix something or or when we glaze, we're going to want to have um, the same black underneath that we're glazing with. So getting some white now and I still have other colors on my brush so just trying to map out where the white areas are, where the brightest areas are. Okay. 
You see how having that darker tone underneath really helps. Actually interacting with the black too that I put down, which is actually I like so. so just leave this dark beigey color underneath. I'm going to pull it down just a little bit more than I have here. Do you find some of these petals a little bit better? These ones are darker down here. Oops. This petal. Make it a little bit bigger. So filling that in. And there's something down there. I'm gonna get some of this really dark color and just put some petal down in here that's super dark that I can't tell where it starts or stops there. Okay. And some of this darker color and pulling it from the outside up. This is that burnt umber mixture. And then I want some. Get this brush here. I'm going to mix up some green gold for our flower centers. Get some yellow, cadmium yellow medium, yellow oxide, and a little bit of the green. It's mostly yellowish though, it's got just a little green tint. I'm gonna Okay, let's go ahead and use this color. I'm going to add a little bit of white because it just doesn't seem to be showing up very good. I'm going to use it in on here. Just scribble a little. And that's in there. It looks bright, so I'm going to get some of the darker greens. Somebody wants to know, in your mm -hmm. opinion, mm -hmm. what do you think is the uh, hardest flower to paint? Hmm. I don't know. That's a good question. I really don't know. Um, I think a painting or the petals, flowers like like um, uh, uh, what am I thinking? The name of it? Um, carn uh, carnations. 
petals that are flowers that have um, petals that are all kind of going in different directions and crisscrossing um, with no distinct pattern are more difficult, I think, to paint than petal and paint than flowers that have a real distinct like daisies are probably one of the easiest ones because they have these you know just every petal is pretty mapped out um same length you know like same length same shape and everything but when you have petals that are and uh, you know peonies can peonies can be tough too i think because they are also kind of that same kind of thing where they just got all these crazy petals going in all different directions um but but i've painted um um the carnations for like our flower of the month last year and i did i found them to be more difficult than i thought they would be and i think it's because uh because the pattern is so random it's hard to it's hard to simplify it like i was trying to and still make it look like a carnation you know so um, it's much easier to simplify a flower like a rose that has a real distinct pattern in it. And it, you know, they all look very similar in some ways, you know. I don't know. There was no wrong answer, so points are awarded. some bobs in here and then before I get much farther I need to let's go ahead and use I guess I'll go ahead and use the little bit smaller filbert here I want to put in my streaks that are in that this flower so but a little tiny bit of purple with my magenta and maybe a tiny touch of like black or something to neutralize it just a little bit okay so this is like a deep dark burgundy color here that we've got oh, i keep finding hairs <sighs> and so i'm going to use the edge of my brush there we go just do a few little streaks And I'll probably go back over these with white, so if you get too much of it, don't worry too much. Uh, the color is looking a little bit too bright, so I'm going to take some black and just add a little bit more black, because I don't want it to look... Everything in this is kind of muted quite a lot, so you want it to be the same kind of dark, intense color. If you have something like really bright that you know gets introduced, it'll kind of pull attention away from everything else. Oh, you see how much that is just like kind of in your face bright right now. We'll definitely have to adjust it later. Start there. And let's go ahead and put in some of our petals and then we'll adjust some more. So now I'm going to get just straight white. This petal goes in here and goes toward the center. It's kind of on its edge. Coming in, and I'm probably going to need to put back in some of these highlighted. Get some bright, 
dark gray color here. Get some more white. And the gray. White. What you doing, huh? Swipe out. Oh, thank you. Did you get them out? Thanks. The answer is either yes or no, <laughs> but I think I was successful. I'm putting some of that dark color on the underside of this petal here and then I'm gonna go back in with the lighter and overlap it just a little bit right here where this petal is coming up in front. This this brush is a little bit big for this smaller flower, so I may need to switch it out a little bit here in a minute. Some of the darker color and put a dark fold in that. The kind of more of a goldish color. Didn't get it. What? Prepare for black. Okay, get them. <sighs> get away from me. You flew sideways. Is that smutting you, huh? Okay, so the bottom of these petals are cupped. So let's just make sure we have a these rounded shapes here at the bottom. I don't have any of my highlight color. Okay, let's go for some of that. I'm going to try to run some, there we go, some of this color through while it's wet. Kind of blend a little bit. 
a little more natural, I think. Back in and darkening up some of these areas that need darker. Okay, get some white. So you touched briefly on it earlier about mm -hmm. the uh, the traceables being available on patreon.com yeah. slash Angela Fine Art. And uh, also there's other levels. There's a level where you get that plus the bonus video uh, that we did uh, two weeks ago. Yes, and we just finished our $10 love videos. So we did the, this one's our $10 level video for this month. Turned out pretty cool. I like it. Um. So yeah, check it out. There's a link down below. Click we it. do longer version videos. So it's for, you know, those who are kind of ready to a little bit deeper than we can get. I mean, Mm -hmm. On a you know couple hour video on on a YouTube, right in the ten longer video sometimes, but and the ten dollar video also comes with access to a Facebook group where you can submit paintings and get advice from Angela and all that stuff, right? And all those access gets you access to everything at that level that's going back to February twenty seventeen. So it's not just this traceable; it's all the traceables, it's all the bonus videos, right. so forth. Yep, it is. We're getting close to the end of the month, so you may, if you're thinking about doing it, you may wait until July starts, too. Yes, because they are on a calendar month. Yeah, so they charge you on the first of the month every month, no matter when you signed up. So, it's not, not prorated. Okay. But you are prorated. <laughs> You're a pro. I'm pro. <laughs> You're rated like a means. pro. Don't think that's what it means, honey. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Again, not an insectologist. I need to stop messing with these because I'm starting to just kind of repeat myself here. So I'm going to get some of this yellow, gold, put that back in. Maybe a little bit brighter, but actually we could probably just add black to the, yeah, just add black to or bright yellow and get the same kind of tone. Uh, blacks have a lot of blue in them. And so when you add yellow, they turn green. Get some. Mm 
And I added, um, I don't know if I mentioned it before, but I was adding a little bit of purple to the center of that to darken it up. So it looks good. Yeah, this fly is fucking, he just buzzed my head. Running away from you. Okay, so let's get some white on the tip of this brush here. I'm just going to. And this is supposed to come down a bit further. Something stinky outside the door. Okay. Open that bathroom up. <laughs> Spencer's bedroom door's open. That's stinky enough? Probably. Yeah, probably. It's probably good lure. Teenage boy. Which it's a little it's a little insulting that you keep putting it at me around me. I don't know what that means. I guess it's time for me to take my weekly shower. <laughs> my weekly quarantine shower. <laughs> it's just sadly not too far from the truth. Or weekly now? We're, we're not every two weeks. <laughs> no. Okay. Get real. That, oh, that's right. That's teeth brushing. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Speaking of, I need to go to the dentist really bad, but I'm scared. <laughs> oh. I need my teeth cleaned. We all need our teeth yeah, cleaned. It's been exactly. too long. We're past our. Uh, we're well six past months. Oh, we're well past that. Yeah. Yep. All right. So now looking at it, I think I might just. I don't know. We'll, well, let's go ahead and get more on. But I kind of feel like this petal may may need to come out a little bit farther. Kind of shortened everything up except for that little area there like looks too short so but once we get this other flower in on top it may not matter so um let's go ahead and start kind of mapping out our our large flower here i'm gonna just get the black here and add it to my white maybe a little bit of trimming blue And then in this area down here, it's more brown. So I'm going to just go ahead and add brown to this color. Okay. And I think we're going to need it darker than this in some of these areas, but we'll just go ahead and start with this and see how it goes. So, and right here. Just going to overlap there. And make sure that I'm getting that shape right. It kind of goes almost straight across right here at the top. And then it comes in and in here.
Okay, so there's our basic shape, kind of a kind of squeezed in on the sides a little bit. Just do a little bit right there. And our center is going to be right in here somewhere. And get some of that magenta. Smush that off, get some of the shadow color. Start adding that in. Kind of like what we did with the hydrangeas, just look in my dark areas. Really need this dark almost all over in this flower. Trying to kind of map out the petals just a little bit. A bit brighter magenta right there in the center. And then get a little bit more of the burnt umber color back in here. I think that's about the right shape. Very glad that we simplified the composition a little bit. I think it's working a lot better, just not having everything so crowded. And if you look at the number, the first one that we did in this series, I that's what that's what really decided me because it uh, it's a lot more open, loose. Everything's got a little bit more space in between, so decided to kind of emulate that since they're kind of a companion pieces somewhat hopefully will be oops got some black there i'm just going to grab some black put that back right there I need to go ahead and put in some of the flowers that are around these. Now that I've got this on here, I'm just going to go ahead and get some of that green. Let me go ahead and add some of that purple to it. It'll be a good tone. And use the edge of my brush to brush that out and... Use that dark purple center of the iris. Get some unbleached titanium, add that to this green.
just let that set. I think it got a little bit too dark or too, too bright. I mean, we can use a little bit of ultramarine blue and green here. And again, I'm kind of running it through this gray black color that we had. However, I'm going to go ahead and do this flower over here and some leaves. and keep them really dark so that they just kind of disappear into this background a little bit. Okay, gonna do the same thing in here. It's dark. Dark leaves. There's a little bud here. Another dark leaf here. Sorry, I'm whispering. All right. I can tell you're thinking about it. I know. Yeah. I'm going to start whispering. Yep. <laughs> Going back in with some darker color here. Just a tiniest bit of white in here with this. Purple, maybe a little bit of blue, black. Just a little bit of white. See how that does. Okay, so I can see that I can probably go ahead and put in a couple petals that are in this dark back here underneath the hydrangea. So I'm going to get some of this ash pink and mix it with my purple, my uh, magenta, quinacridone magenta and quinacridone burnt orange and just do a couple small petals back there that are hiding in the dark. Maybe get a little bit of the bright pink and just need a couple like sideways petals there. Somebody has a question. Okay. They'd like to know, uh, do you think that if this would look good in a blue background? Mm, yeah. Yeah, maybe dark blue. I would I would use a bright blue, but well, I don't know. I guess a bright blue would look good too. Yeah. Um, you just have to watch your values with that, you know, whenever you're changing your background color because this painting, you know, is very... Uh, dark just in general because the black, black background so we're darkening up all of our you know values quite a bit 
to match that background. So, you know, if you're using a brighter background, your colors on top may need to be a little bit brighter too. Should be able to tell once we get going. Okay, so let's get some... I don't know what color this was. I think it was like a little bit of brown, maybe some yellow oxide in there with my white. And go mostly white. Getting some of the fluid white here, but I've got these other colors on here. So start to pull through. Like I did with the hydrangea, just kind of pull and lift. I need a little bit darker, just a little too bright. This one's back here, not super. There we go. Super bright. I need to save those for the ones that in the front where I want it to be the most. It's obvious. So this. Come back over that just a little bit. There we go. Keeping these short because they're not super long. And then in the middle here, I'm seeing some. And fuzzy petals, so just kind of tapping to get those. So right here, I've got a bright, bright section coming up through. And some of that ultramarine blue and burnt and black hair. Maybe a little bit of burnt umber. It's picking up a little bit of that pink too, and that's fine. So down in here we got all these petals that are in the dark. So just gonna put use this kind of medium brown here to do those and leave the really dark areas. How you doing, hun? Yeah. You get in there? Mm -hmm. Being quiet today. A little bit. Chat quiet today. Uh, yeah, just trying to catch a good zoom in for some people. Mm. Get some green here. Okay. 
Great, coming into our shadow areas. Just looking from the back to the front, so slowly working my way to this front, which really, the this probably could have been painted first because it's kind of the most overlapped part. So we'll go ahead and get some white here and get a clear idea of where this is going. So right in here. Ooh, this paint may be too fluid. Yeah, that paint was a little too fluid. I didn't like how it looked. Went on a little too solid for me. I'm going to stick with the heavy body acrylics here. Which brush are you using right now? It's the same one that I've been using, the Four Filbert. Okay. And somebody's linked the hydrangea video in the heart taking flight okay. group. Uh okay. Good. Yeah, that video was that link is unlisted, so it can't be shared public. Correct. Yeah. But thank you to whoever did that. So somebody asked, and somebody was helpful. Nice. Thank you. It's a pretty good group of people. Yes, we do. Pretty awesome. And that's the thing about the Facebook groups, is that there's no meanies allowed. Yes, exactly. We don't, don't go for that. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of art art groups out there that are very kind of combative, I should say, or get very, you know, argumentative at times. I'm not, I don't go for drama. <laughs> <laughs> You're drama-free zone. It's a safe place for people to share their art as they're learning and yeah. get some good comments and good encouragement. Yes. There's no bad art. Okay, I'm gonna push this back a little. I think I got too far forward there. And that looks purple, which I did not intend for it to. So I'm gonna get that burgundy, put that back in there. There we go. Okay. 
Gonna switch to the number six filbert here. This is the, and you can see, I mean, normally you go up in size number four to six, but this case it's a different, um, each, each brush has its own, brush company has its own numbering system. And these are all Princeton brushes, but each line even has its own numbering system. So um, the six in the fill, the, this the summit line is much bigger than this one. And then the six in the, in the uh, velvet touch is smaller. So this one's about a quarter inch, I would say. Mark just swallowed one. Okay, huh? So what they say about love, it is true. Love is blind. Okay. Either that or you need new glasses. Why? Because I just walked past the mirror and saw myself. <laughs> <laughs> Your hair's doing some interesting things today. <laughs> so just saying. Ditto. I've been sitting outside with my hair up in a ponytail, and it's not a pretty <laughs> most days, so I feel you, hon. Been married long enough, we kind of overlook the ugly days. <laughs> you don't like this? Do you like this look? <laughs> it's different. It's different. Interesting. <laughs> that is such a kind way of saying, holy crap. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, bless your heart. <laughs> Interesting look. Okay, so. Trying to get this. It's it's a it's a tricky thing because you don't want to you want to lose your depth, but you've got to kind of leave enough of that dark showing there so that you can see the next petal. And these this brush is almost too small because it's not covering a wide enough area. So I'm going to set this brush down here and just pull through this. Okay, I'm going to take all of that off. I'm picking up all this magenta in here. Just need to let that dry. So I just keep adding more paint on there, just getting thicker and thicker. So adding the gray underneath. Okay, now I'm going to grab that white, get the thicker white. Yeah, mostly just on the tip of the brush there. Just gonna barely set it down and then flick it towards the area where I want it to go. And just kinda then do the same thing here. Just go on top. 
and you get that layered effect. There we go. I'm going to leave the center kind of basically just like that. It's not it's not really well defined. So if I want to bring petals in cup it. it should be kind of a circle happening right in here so just kind of keep an eye on that this petal is coming in and cutting off right there it got a weird shape right here so just need to find the back side here Okay, and then the rest of this is just kind of some random petals. It's kind of a medium light gray. We've already got some of them in, so I'm just going to go back over and brighten up some areas, define them a little bit. So in chat, I just shared the link to the other dark flower oh, good. painting. Good. So if you haven't already, like, subscribe, jump into chat, grab the link. Yeah. Good deal. I'm going to push that back just a little bit right there. Okay. I think I'm happy with that. Oh, that's it. See, want to do anything else? And get a little bit more, a little brighter tip right there on that guy. Get a little bit of burnt. See, you know, this is where the cadmium red comes in. Gonna get some of the red, burnt sienna, quinacridone, burnt orange, quinacridone magenta. Create kind of a red. Put it right here. And we can leave this one a little bit more red instead of pink. Because we got the red one that's up here. Right? We can put that color on this one if we want to, to pull in that color. Um, which would be kind of nice to have a different color going on instead of the, just the, another pink. So I think I'm just going to do this flower with a little bit more of a pink tones. It's facing away from us. And then grab some... Let's grab some unbleached titanium, mix that in with this, and mainly just the outside petals are seeing this color. Dark 
darker color here, and then I'm going to just kind of go over these lines a little bit. Blend them in just a little bit. And there's a little bitty. Probably need a smaller brush. Get a smaller brush here. Two round. And just tap in like a little bit of a center there. And then do some of these side petals there. This needs to be darker. Let me get the this this brush I'm holding in my hand right now. I'm gonna get this brush. Just <laughs> a small filbert. <laughs> and some, let's go ahead and get some of that ash pink. Mix it in with this color. Some white. Okay. So these petals are. Facing away from us, we're seeing a lot of them from their side. So the ones that we're seeing on their side are just these little little lines here. Getting too much color going down though. So need to come in the opposite direction with some of the, the color. Okay, so now I'm going to load it again, but I'm going to try to get less paint on, on it. These ones we're seeing the flat rounded part. And then as they come around this side here, they get smaller. So to remind people and to also maybe let people know that may not know that when you watch on replay, you can speed up or slow down the video. Mm -hmm. So if you're wanting to see how Angela's doing the, the brush strokes and turning the brush and things like that, uh, if you slow down the speed, you can you know get a better feel for it because sometimes, you know, so she's been doing this so long and just goes and does it. True. Which is kind of what you want to do if you overthink it. Sometimes it comes out worse. Yeah, you don't want to. You got to do these kind of painting petals flat and fast. Otherwise, they do like when I slow them down, they just start to look muddy and weird. So, yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna call that ish good ish. I think I did it too light altogether. The whole thing is probably too light, so I may go back in and glaze over the top of it. But for now, I think it's good. Yeah.
And let me see. All right, so we've got our rose. A rose is a similar color to this one, so it's more of the brownish tones. I'm going to go ahead and go with burnt umber and quinacridone burnt orange and some magenta. And then even a little bit of black. for the opening in. Just trying to see if I want to move it over any. I feel like I could probably move it over just slightly this way. So here's the center of it. It's dark. And the open petal will be right in here, right here. I think I want a little bit more pink. All right, let's get some white going on. We can see what we're doing here. So getting some white. Flatten that brush out. These petals that are down at the bottom are in shadow. I'm going to go ahead and start from the middle. Try to... Find things. First, bit. So I'm running through the wet paint here, so it's picking up a little bit of that original color too. Yeah, go ahead. Will you be doing glazing in this photo? Probably. Yeah, yeah, probably so. some. And somebody asked about it, so when you get to that portion, I'm sure you'll explain it. I will. Sweet. Then I won't ask you to do it now. Yeah, thanks. I'm just going to make that person just sit here for another two hours. So you can find explain it. Explain glazing here in a minute. <laughs> yeah, that's good. But there's several paintings, tutorials you've done with glazing. I do glazing almost every time I paint. So as I'm putting these petals on, I'm trying to leave the dark areas if possible. Probably not going to get it exactly the way it looks in the photo, but it'll be close. I'm not really trying to imitate it exactly. And I'm going to go ahead and go over where the butterfly is. Just have to fill that in later. Get some of the bleached titanium here. Get some of the white. I'm going to wipe my brush off because it's got way too much red in it. Just 
still got a lot of red in it. Okay, so there's the open part of the rose. Get the lidded. I'm going to find these petals that we've already done now, and I'm going to highlight on top of them. And not all of them are going to get this bright color. I'm going a little bit brighter than I need to on this, so we'll definitely have to glaze this part back a little bit because it's too bright, but that's okay. Some burnt umber yellow oxide here. If I pick up a little bit of green, that's even good. I'm gonna come up inside this one with a little bit of the dark. Yellow. Add it to some of these petals here. Okay, so that area needs to be darker, obviously. Get the and Denver. Okay, let's let that set. Kind of got that pebble off, I think. Use the script liner, some burnt umber. Let's get some of this white here. Get some burnt sienna, burnt number. It's probably too bright still since so darken it up a little bit. There we go. So you want it dark and with, uh, let me get some glazing medium. With the liner, you need it thin. So 
It should be kind of a milk consistency. That's why the glazy medium helps, because it'll make it stick if you add too much water to uh, acrylics. They'll not bind well to your canvas. So I'm going to use this to make my sticks on here. And I'm just going to kind of wiggle. The brush. Yes, brush. Not yourself. Not myself. <laughs> no. Let's be clear here. <laughs> Mark be getting out his popcorn. If I was going. <laughs> Go for a ride. <laughs> <laughs> That's a dog reference. <laughs> to be clear. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. Did you say so? And go for a walk. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I'm a safer. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to take this opportunity just to kind of clean up this. I'm still going to put a flower over here. Well, what did I do here? I wiped off that whole section. That's weird. How that happened. I have no idea how that happened. You strange. What were you going to say? I have no idea. Okay. I thought you started to say something. Probably, but you know, you know my brain. Okay. <laughs> Things don't stick around very long in there. <laughs> Mine either anymore. Gosh. That's scary. Okay. Let's see here. If I need to move the butterfly, but I think it's pretty good where I have it there. So I'm going to go ahead and use this brush and let's go ahead and use this stick color here. And okay, so I have a dilemma. So in the photograph, the wings of the butterfly are completely black. And all you're seeing is the spots. So I can do two things. I can either darken up, like, you know, I can, I'm going to have to give it some contrast, or I can just leave it exactly the way it is, you know, and let the spots be the only thing you're seeing. Which I kind of, part of me wants to draw a little bit more attention to the butterfly. And to do that, I have to make the wings visible. So they're just kind of bigger. It's right here. Yes. So in the picture, you can see, you know, you can barely see the butterfly. It just, I think if you do this, peeking out of the, if you do the spots along the edges, like the butterfly is, and you, then you'll see the contour of the, yeah. of the mm -hmm. wings for sure. I think I'm just going to light up the black just a little bit. So it's still black, but it's, Barely, barely visible. I think that I'm... We'll see. See if it dries the right tone. See, this butterfly is over the top of this part here. There's the body and the tail. And the little head is right in there.
Okay, and then the other painting of this, the other dark floral, there's some blue, some dark smoky blue flowers. So I'm going to go ahead and put in some blue flowers in this. I'm going to put them Coming up from here. Keep them almost black here at the first. And then I'm going to get some of this, and I'm literally going to just use the edge of my brush and just do some little kind of half moon petals. And we'll leave that. We'll see. It may we may need to darken it up a little bit. I'm gonna add just a couple of them down here too. Just kind of fill in the darkness a little. Okay. Some white. I'm gonna find the middle sections here and just kind of tap in some. Okay, I don't know if I like these or not. We can always paint over it. So that's the beauty of this kind of background. You can experiment a little bit. If you don't like it, you can always paint it over. Okay, I'm going to scrape off all of this, get some fresh white, and do our butterfly, and then we can glaze and we'll be done. So not too bad. So two hours so far. Which I figured that's about right. I, that's why I did it on a Saturday. I knew it would be at least two hours. So I think I'll figure it would be two and a half or so. Somebody asked me at the beginning of the video how long. Uh huh. What'd you say? I said three. Okay. I think I can beat you. I think I can do it in two and a half, but we'll see. Name that tune. <laughs> you got to be of a certain age to even know what we're talking about there. Name that tune. Such a, such a. Gen X boomer show. It really was a boomer show. Gen X, we got the tail end of it. It was our childhood. I loved that show. I wasn't very good at it. They have a show, Jamie Foxx has a show now that's called Beach Shazam or something like yeah. that that I like too that's very similar to it. In some ways. Okay, here we go. bit more white. I don't know why I put out that much. I'm not going to need that much. You never know. Um, okay. Well, maybe. I don't know. I'm going to put out some fresh black. Too. I'm going to put out some fluid ones. Another hair. <laughs> All right. So I'm seeing. Let's get some black. Blue, and then some green, yellow, just putting all the colors in here. Okay. 
So these flowers here, and I don't know what they're called. They're the ones that Chick-fil-A puts in their dining room. Mm -hmm. If we ever get to go back <laughs> to eating at restaurants again. <laughs> They've halted some of the openings in Arkansas because we've had a resurgence. We're like a hot spot. Yay. It's one of the times you don't want to be number one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Well. We're being smart, staying safe, so that's all that we can do. And encourage our friends to do the same, but I have some That's friends right. that are not cooperating. You do you. I know. Just want to take them aside and... Tell them that we care. Exactly. That. <laughs> I'm going to say something else, but that's better. More on brand. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> You know me, I talk a big game, but yeah. when it comes right down to it, I'm not going to confront. <laughs> oh, okay. That looks good, I think. Um, I need to, I'm going to have to put a little bit more in here, but I think I've got some of that. I think it might be a little bit too bright, though. We'll let it dry, though. It always dries a little bit darker. And let's go ahead and use some of this green here. Mix it with the brown. Burnt umber. I'm gonna detail to those, grab some of the black and green and blue, and go the opposite way and shade some of them. You want the bottoms to disappear, so that's what I'm trying to do. I'm just trying to kind of add some shadows here where do it the same over here darken up the bottoms of these leaves and things so that they kind of disappear and maybe give them a little bit of indication of some oops let's go this way somebody threw out tuber rose tuber rose I believe you. It was more of a question than a, but you know, I guess, I guess. I don't know. I thought they were called something else, but that could be right. No. Sorry, no points awarded. Nasturtium? But we thank you for playing. Try Nasturtium. Oh, yeah, you want me to spell that, huh? N A S T. You want T-I-U-N-E-S-T. What? N-A-S-T-U-R. T-I-U-M, maybe? Okay. Oh, no. Those are very colorful. No? They're like reds and yellows. Okay. No, wrong. Sorry. Mm. No point for you either. No point for me. No one knows. Um, I can't think of it. All right, people are throwing out uh, freesia. I hear it. No, it's not freesia. Oh, man. No, because I've painted those recently. They're a lot smaller.
And a little bit of white highlights here on this rose. Given up? Uh, nobody has any other suggestions so, so far. Come on, guys. There's all my gardening people. So if you're new to the channel, also subscribe. And then after the video here, after the live stream, you can check out the channel. And there's a whole bunch of flowers. Yeah. Of every shape, size, large, small, all together, mm -hmm. one-offs. So check it out. Yep, we do a lot of flowers here. Somebody was like, made a comment the other day. It was like, I'm over flowers. I'm like, I'm sorry for you. <laughs> I'm not well, that's I'm okay. going to keep painting them that's right they can be over flowers you be over it you paint what you want and we know that there's other means of that they can learn to paint other things and absolutely that's why there is like a McDonald's and a Burger King you know it's people like different things <laughs> I don't know if everybody Would like either one of those, honey. <laughs> Man, you are so uppity. <laughs> That's why there's dark chocolate and then everything else. Exactly. It's for those people who don't have taste. <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry, did I? Was my mic on? <laughs> <laughs> like I said, I feel... I'm sorry for you. <laughs> if you're over flowers. Okay. Uh, what is? That might be it. Yeah, it's got a weird name. Basically. Ooh, but I don't know. Who could be? Let me see. Yeah. Uh -huh. that's the one in Alstrom or yeah. Yep. Yep. That's it. Okay, so they ding, get ding, ding. they get partial ahead. points because they didn't spell it correctly. Oh, okay. Well but, that's okay. You know. Google make, made up for it. Yeah. I'm just adding the lighter, a little bit lighter color to this flower here. Now that we got everything else on, you can see that it needs a little brighter touch here and there. Just try not to go too much, though. I'm gonna get the angle brush now. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna go ahead and use. I think I'll use the three eighths inch angle. Yeah, we're gonna glaze on our rose. Use the quinacridone magenta. So the um, quinacridone burnt orange. Let's see. Might add just a little bit of brown. 
Here's the glazing portion of the show, people. Okay, so glaze is just a thin layer. That's all it is. It's just like glaze on your donut, if you think about that. It's not It's not a solid frosting. It's a it's just a thin layer that we're going to put over the top of the color so that we can see the other colors through. So we'll start over here and work on the hydrangea. And I'm going to go in and try to hit the dark areas and in any area where I want to darken up just a little bit. So, and I use my finger to wipe it off. You can use a paper towel or something like that if you want to, but just kind of helps me control it so I can work more quickly. And then, like, say I got that too dark, I can just glaze back over it, darken it up a little bit, and good to go. Okay. So let's use it in here. This flower's pretty much done, but especially like right where the petals go down in, where they overlap, you can tint that area with a little bit of glaze. It can help sew down in here, coming up. Right in here where this one is overlapping. You can just make sure you don't get a solid line where it is integrated so you can use your finger if you need to or whatever but uh, if I was being super careful I would probably put this on a little more carefully but find it honestly doesn't really matter that much as long as you kind of blend it in as you go. Let me get some of that dark burgundy color here. And this is a glaze, but it's pretty thick. And again, if you get too much of it, you can always go back in with a damp paper towel and just kind of tap it off. Don't pull too much because you've got a lot of wet paint going on here, so you don't want to wipe anything off of your under layers. It's going to take like about 24 hours for your, your paint to fully set. So anytime you're adding new color onto it at this point, uh, you have the potential of... of of uh, pulling the paint off if you go back in while well, that paint's wet the new layer's wet because it kind of almost react it doesn't fully reactivate it like watercolors but it sort of does the same type of thing where like you've got wet paint on top of paint that is not fully dry yet and um i'll do it over here so you can see what i'm talking about so if i put wet paint down here and that black paint has been sitting there so it's dry um, but if I let it set there for a minute and, um, and then go back in and rub on it, it rubs that paint right off because it kind of re-wet re that paint, even though it's dry right now, it's not fully cured. So, um, you just have to be aware of that when you're working with acrylics. Um, I'm just going to stick that black back on there. No big I just painted over my butterfly though, but I wanted to show you what I meant. So if you did that tomorrow, it still could do that to some degree, but it wouldn't do it as easily. Okay, so I'm going to take it, you know, once it's kind of cured a little bit. Right. And I don't know that I'm going to have to glaze the this one too much, but I might do it just a little bit. I feel like it could use like a little bit of a golden brown tones. Time is it? Oh man, I've only got five minutes. I think you're right, honey. 
<laughs> Dang it. I know. I always have the best intentions of getting done super fast, but never do. All right. So made kind of a brownish gray here, black, yellow, or yellow oxide, brown. And I'm just going to use this in here. Glaze in kind of this and just kind of shadow it. Just kind of think about, you know, when your shadows are falling right in here. This little area is a little shadowed. And then what we can do is if we need to, well, I'm totally off camera right now, honey. that you're seeing the flower petals grow too. So if any of the color does. Um, show streaks. It'll be streaked in the right direction. Alright, so I'm going to get some more white here. some of these. Maybe get a little bit of that brown. This is glazing and Repainting, glazing, repainting, that's what gives you all this good depth. those dark areas a little bit. Okay. And then let's glaze on our rose here. Magenta. If you don't have the burnt orange, you can use burnt sienna instead. So 
I'm going to clean my brush out so that I have a little bit more control. I'm going to get my glaze, fully load that into the brush, and then get just a little bit of the color on. If I get it mostly on the tip of the brush, then I can really kind of get down into these little cracks here and add it just in little areas. pretty pretty good we're not gonna have to glaze a whole lot but I am gonna glaze in this area down here this all of this area is a lot darker than we have it so I'll leave the highlighted pink highlighted petals up in here you can glaze in between them And then really darken up the center and all these ones that are down here. that is. And I'm going to get some black, some of my brown that I was using over here. I'm going to use it down in here, darken up that area real dark. And I need to put back in that, that petal there. Bleached titanium and titanium white, and There's some dark back back here. I'm gonna get some of this darker purple pink here. Some of that brown black color. I'm gonna fill in that area with that darker. 
darker color. Get some color here to glaze the brown hat right here. I'm going to go blue gray here. to let this dry. Okay, let's try that again. Brown, blue, a little bit of white. Just noticed a color on this petal that I didn't have in there, so I'm just trying to add it right there. It's not one to stick right now because that paint underneath is still kind of wet, so I'm just going to let it set. Get it on as good as I can and just let it set. Let's add it into this petal here. And some white, a little bit of that ash pink. Okay, getting there. Really, you can stop at any point where you're happy with yours, so I'm just kind of fussing here at this point. Stop, quit, and just get on with it. I mean, have I ever done that, though? Sometimes I do. But you'll know that you're happy when you start clapping your hands. <laughs> really? Yeah, that's when you know that you're happy. 
They wrote a song about it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Check. Yeah, I sang that song to Liam. He thought he was not sure what to think of it. It's like looking at me, thinking, what are you doing? Feeling okay, Graham? Graham? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Please. And then just going back in and kind of pitching it. There, I think that's good enough. I'm not, I don't need to fuss and fussing. So let's fuss with this. So this needs some help a lot. A lot of help. I'm just going to glaze with some burnt umber, a little bit of black. See how this goes. kind of coloring all of these colors you know it's just it's kind of influencing you should say all these colors so, so a little bit of black in almost all of these Okay. Darken up this. Get some black, burnt orange, Ecuador magenta. A little bit of cadmium red. Red, I uh, can't. Anything, anything that's opaque is not great glazing color. So cadmium red's pretty opaque. So use it sparingly. The the car uh, carbon black is also opaque. So should to use it in small doses. You just know that it's not going to be fully, fully transparent. To go over these. Going in with almost solid color on here. Okay. And then grabbing some white. And then. And just touch up where I want the center of the flower to peek out and maybe some of these petals.
You can go over brighter if you need to. I think that's good enough. Okay, let's put in our butterfly and we're done. So we need the fluid black here. Make sure our rose is completely done. You don't want to do painting over it, around it. So here's my little butterfly head here. My body. my antenna come up like this I'm gonna put them in where I can't see both of them in the photograph but I'm gonna put them both in there and then tongue coming down What I'm seeing here, go ahead and just put what I'm seeing. Little legs. There's some there too. Okay, so let me get some of this gray. We use this is the gray that we used in the gray brown that we used in the sticks up here. There's lights in the butterfly body. I'm going to use my pencil to draw in these wings so I kind of know where to go with them. Again, remember, everything's going back to this, so they all need to meet up right there. Somewhere in there. And I feel like this part could come out further. Okay. Get some K. 
cadmium yellow, yellow oxide, my white. I'm just gonna go along the outside edge of that, those wings, like Mark was saying, just to mark out the spots along there. And then there's little teeny tiny dots right along the very edge. And go got those wings in the right spot here. And then these back ones, we're just going to get a little bit of that black and add it to it. Maybe a little bit of brown. It seems seem a little warmer than that. Or we can just do it the same color and glaze it. So either way, easier to do it that way. Dab, dab. You just look at your pattern. You can study your butterfly wings. See what what different. If you don't want to do this kind of butterfly, you can do whatever kind of butterfly you wanted to. But I like I like the black and white against this. I think it works well with this theme. So these ones are these ones are dry. I can go ahead and tap off my outline. It's a chalk pencil so it'll just come right off. I'm gonna use some of the black. Paint around this. Oh, I didn't do this flower. Let's do that one. So it's got a little bit of a little bit of pink in it. Little 
bud. There. Pink and black to tint it. I think it's gonna work. Okay, um, this is dry, so I can go ahead and tap it. I think it works. And then what I can do is just use a little bit of this brown glaze that I was using before on the rose or where, I don't know where I was using this before. It's brown and black, basically, I think. A little bit of glazing medium. This is dry, so I can just go in here and just glaze over bottom section of it and this back, these back wings here. Spread out the wings from the back wings a little bit. <laughs> I love that. I think it's pretty. Okay, I just keep having to paint over the section with you. But as I do that, yeah, it's not like okay. Let's try this again. Get some thicker black this time. I was putting this black, it's just wiping it off. Okay, here we go. Stay. Okay, I think we're done. I like it. Yeah, I like it. Well, right at three hours, you're right. <laughs> Who was right? Mark was. Mark is right. I never can tell. Super chat. Yay. I'm going to get a smaller brush for signing. Shorter liner is easier. 18 watt there. Go for it. Well, the super chat was from last show. Ah, that's right. We had a donation through PayPal. We so did. thank you very much, Diane. Appreciate it. Thank you, Diane. Thank you so much for the support. Hope she's watching today. Yeah. Yeah, we don't check the pay PayPal stuff till after the show and Yeah. I missed it last week. Yep. Mo, mo money in your pocket through PayPal. Thank you. Yes, they do. YouTube takes a good chunk. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice. Signing. There we go. I like it. Hope you guys like it too. If you did, give it a thumbs up in the description there. And comment. Let me know what you enjoyed about it. And if you want to see some more like this, I have one more photo that I've already bought that's kind of along the the same lines in the stark floral. So if you enjoyed this, uh, let me know in comments and I'll think about doing another one. But uh, otherwise, hope you guys have a great uh, rest of your weekend and uh, 
great rest of your Saturdays, the, <laughs> the rest of the summer. We're, we'll uh, see you on Tuesday nights, but uh, we're going to take our Saturdays off. So. Right, but the schedule is the same for Tuesdays, the Thursday Patreon bonus. Yes, everything else is the same. And the monthly Sunday exactly. Patreon bonus. Yes. yes, everything else is the same, just taking a little bit of a break on Saturdays so that Mark can go do his garden, get his garden on. <laughs> We can visit some family and do some stuff. Yes, we are planning on doing some trips and stuff. So, yes, that too. That's that's actually the main reason. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> all right, guys, thanks for watching today. And uh, we will see you Tuesday. And, uh, yeah, take care out there. We'll see you next time. Bye.